What's going on, YouTube world and YouTube tribe? Welcome back to Little Bit Man Gang. Bring you another review. You see the belt. You see the belt, right? I'm the champ, so acknowledge me, your tribal chief, and get ready for this review. Because the tribal chief has a review for Friday Night Smackdown. The only channel that you should be watching right now. Yeah, I'm just kidding. But, yeah. So, I had to grab my notepad here. because the uh, So, I could remember how to start this video off. And how I'm going to do that. I had to straighten up my camera just a bit down. And there we go. Alright. So, if you already haven't watched Smackdown, obviously. Smackdown started off with a promo from John Cena. John Cena is basically, officially, because we haven't really seen him respond to Roman Reigns' denial for it, for a match at SummerSlam for the Universal Championship. Uh, but I think they did say he wrestled a dark match last week. And I want to also put this. I, I just heard the news about Bray Wyatt being released from WWE. And I probably talk about it in my review for Monday Night Raw since he was a Raw superstar. I just want to let you guys know that that, that will be talked about in my Raw review. But, um, yes. So, John Cena basically started off uh, Friday Night Smackdown, basically cutting the promo saying that he he's okay with getting rejected. That he he's okay with, you know, being told that men denied a match because, you know, it's, it is what it is. He said, okay, you know, that I, I can handle. Where I can't, he said, what he can't let go was why Roman denied him. And he brought down how Roman denied him because he said, Ro, he said, Roman denied me because I, he said, I, I still the same old person from back in 2005 and 2006. He, he basically said, he, he said, I'm the same John Cena with the same clothes, same gimmick, same everything, basically. And that. He said, that's why, he said, and he said, it just didn't sit well with him. He said, that's why you denied me. And he said, you know, that really didn't sit well with him because, you know, why deny me because, just because I'm still the same. So he said, you know, he, he, he ran down like, would you deny somebody like Stone Cold Steve Austin who basically would come in doing the same gimmick? You know, it wouldn't seem right. He came in as... He said, I think he said, beefy, handsome, stone cold, whatever, something like that. And, um, or he said, The Rock coming as Little Johnson, uh, Little Dwayne Johnson, or something like that. And, you know, basically cutting a good promo saying that, you know, it wouldn't seem right to change who you are because it just wouldn't fit your person. They, they are proud of who they is. You are never going to see them coming and acting like a different person. They, they act the same way because they stand proud to that. And that, and that he basically is not the end of it. He's not gonna, uh, he's not gonna uh, let it stand. And then he, you know, he uh, he says some cool things and then drop the mic, do a signature. But you think that's the end of it? Then out comes Baron Corbin. Baron Corbin comes out doing his whole, oh man, I am hurt, desperate, hurt for some money, John. I need your help. And John, you know, he's like, whoa, whoa, you know, they honestly they chatting. You suck, but I don't know who you are. And then he said, oh, wait a minute, you're Baron Corbin. Wow, man, you look, he said, yeah, I know, I look rough. And, you know, they, you know, some slash think about him, how he got an injury to his groin. And uh, <laughs> he's not able to perform. His wife and left him and took the kids. Oh, he's going through it. So he basically asked John for help. And John gave him some money, but he's like, what, that's it? That's all he said. He said, that's all I got on me. And, then, you know, he's like. But she said, you can help me another way to put me in the Suicide Squad movie or put me in the sequel as a stuntman. I'll do anything. I just need your help because you got Hollywood connections. And then, um, you know, he, well, John Cena basically couldn't help him. He uh, insulted John Cena and said, he was a, you really are a self, a self, a tight, self-absorbed, egotistical, uh, uh, um, I think he said, money pension uh, Hollywood sellout. And John said, so, you know what, no, you know what, no, no, he's right. We're going to help him. We're going to give him help. We're going to give you the help that you really need, an attitude adjustment. And he, do, he you know, he hit the attitude adjustment, or as I like to call it, the F-U, because I, I hate the name, the attitude adjustment. 
I always liked that his finisher was called the FU and his, his submission hole was called the STFU. <laughs> um, those to me his his finishing moves will always be the FU and the STFU. But that's the end of that promo. Then it leads it to the first match of the night. The first match is Rey Mysterio uh, with Dom versus Jimmy Uso with uh, with uh, Jay Uso's at ringside. And once again, we got the same old match, the same everything. But this time, it, it this time is Ray pinning Jimmy with the assistance from Don. The way how uh, Jimmy and uh, Jay has been, how Jimmy and Jay beat them. They uh, they basically the Mysterios beat them the same way where Ray went for the pin and Don got in and put his feet on the back of Ray's uh, on the back of Ray and Ray was able to pin him. Still the same old thing, whatever, right? I still the same stuff. Wow. Um, moving on. So we're gonna move on to the next promo, which is Bianca Belair. Bianca Belair comes out because I, I guess it was like her hundred day. Yeah, a hundred day as uh, SmackDown Women's Champion. But then they said to be exact is a hundred and ten days. But they went to go. They was she was celebrating her 110 days as champion, and then they basically was asking her, "Well, what was next? You no, know, on what was what she was gonna do next with the next 100 days or whatever." So she basically was going. She was getting ready to say what she was gonna do, but then she's interrupted by Carmella, who said that you know who's basically congratulating her, congratulating her for being champion for 110 days. But she said, "Why don't you give one more shot at the championship to the person?" Who held that title for 130 days, which is Carmella herself. <clears throat> and before she could get the answer to that, Zelina Vega interrupts um, interrupts Carmella to uh, to challenge basically to challenge Bianca Belair herself. And I, I what I will say I do like about this segment was that what they had Zelina come out looking like the remake um, Pennywise, not the um, not the uh, uh, not the old OG Pennywise. She looked like the remake Pennywise because she, while well, she had like a clown makeup on, obviously they had she had like the little um, the little makeup that's like oh that be oh, white on his eye, like the little line that be right here then down here, like she had that on around. She had that on one of her eyes, and I it fit her it fit her ring gear because her she basically her ring gear is the same color as. The remake Pennywise, and then she got the red hair, so it was understandable why they gave made her dress like that. But then to get back on track, she uh, they both get you know, I think she is set Bianca accepts Elena's challenge, and Carmella gets mad, attacks um, uh, Bianca from behind, then Zelina jumps in on and they both beat the hell out of Bianca until a uh, returning for the first time since WrestleMania. Uh, returning Sasha Banks, she basically she returns to help uh, Bianca Belair, and you know everything uh, all hunky dory. You know she helps fight all Carmella and Zelina, and Zelina, and everything seems cool, or is it? More on that on um, later, and just when I mean more about that later is a little short while after this, they basically in the back they Adam Pierce and. Sonya basically in the backstage segment said that it was official that later on tonight it would be for in the main event it would be Bianca Belair and Sasha Banks versus Zelina Vega and Carmella. Um, it, that the next match would be for Oddly. I don't know why they actually had this as a match, but it was Reginald. It was Reginald versus Chad Gable. Um, for the twenty four seven championship, but he at it was it was promoted like he didn't know who his challenger was going to be. They just said that you know he was just told that he was going he had to defend the title on SmackDown and in a match and that and so that then the Alpha Academy music hit on you didn't know it was going to be Chad or uh, Otis and then uh, Otis was Otis was given the mic and Otis was said your challenger ain't me it's him. And he pointed to Chad, but then Otis attacked him when he looked at Chad, and um, they ended up starting the match. But of course, Reg got did his usual 
ridiculous flips and you know whatever and when it looked like he was about to get the victory over Chad Gable um, Otis would get in the ring to hit him from behind and Reg would win Reg would win and keep his 24-7 24-7 championship via DQ uh, yeah I could have done without this match basically what I'm trying to get at um, uh, let's see what da, 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 da. Oh, they always been there was there was promoting throughout the night of this contract. I forgot that John Cena mentioned that there was going to be a contract signing for the uh, Smack, uh, SmackDown Universal Championship. So uh, I forgot he mentioned that how he was about to be against Finn Balor was going to come into the promo for that, which is that's what I'm about to get into was the contract signing. So now we have the contract signing and you know it. It start. It, they start. It started with Sonya and Adam talking about how Roman rejected John Cena's uh, challenge at SummerSlam. So, which brings us to the contract signing of uh, between Roman Reigns and Finn Balor. So, Finn Balor comes out first to do his whole intro. Then Roman Reigns come out do a long, so long intro. I'm like, come on, Roman. We gotta speed these intros up a little, just a little bit, baby. Just a little bit. You know, I, I, we starting to watch you come down this aisle for like a five minutes into the most of the promos. You coming down to the aisle, you know, and I get that's part of the whole gimmick, but uh, like we, we got to speed that up just, just a little, just a little bit. Um, so yeah, finally Roman's in the ring, right? So he basically run down with Josh Hitter said that he said he, you know how he he said. He said, we already, because I did the crowd started chatting uh, for John Cena. He said, we already heard from Mr. Missionary uh, earlier, referring to his uh, promo from last week, where he said how John Cena was like uh, doing missionary uh, every single day. And uh, John Cena, even, I forgot that John Cena did say that in his promo this week was that he said, if you find somebody, if you got, if you know, if you got a woman. Who could give you a woman, or I think he just said somebody who could uh, who could successfully satisfy you with missionary position for a decade, for over a decade. Derek keep you better Derek keep her, marry him. You know he he you know, he was a you better keep him. So and then he mentions that, and then he was mentioning how uh, Roman was mentioning how uh, John Cena's gimmick is so uh, his gimmick and everything he do is so old and so. Um, uh, and so old and useless that he got to he got to use other people's gimmicks and promos just to make himself seem relevant, and um, and then he says that he respects that's what leads him to Finn Balor. He said he respects Finn Balor because Finn Balor uh, isn't like John Cena. He doesn't come out with the same old with the same old thing every time. He's uh, he's hungry. He wants to he wants to get it, you know. He wants to be, be champion. He said I can respect that. He said I really do respect that. So he said with, without further ado, I'm going to sign this contract. And you know he mentioned something about whooping whipping his ass. He that he's gonna. You know, give him opportunity to be champion, but then he also gonna whip his ass at um, SummerSlam, blah blah blah. And um, fan tells him like, "You so sure, you you really so sure of yourself?" And blah blah this and blah blah that. But he says that, uh, uh, oh yeah, that he said he's gonna be his. He said Roman said he's gonna be his ass so bad he's gonna send him back to NXT. And he said um, he tells uh, Roman that he would gladly go back to NXT. Uh, but as you as your new universal champ, uh, your new or once again your universal champion, and that's pretty much he's getting ready to sign a contract because Roman Reigns had already signed it. He getting ready to sign, it, but then he gets attacked by Baron Corbin. So now Baron Corbin is basically took him out. He threw the contract out the ring, and he beat the hell out of uh, out of uh, out of uh, Finn Balor. Basically, Finn Balor is done. He's taken out. Baron Corbin is getting ready to try to sign the contract so he could become so he could be in the main event with Roman Reigns for the Universal Championship. Basically saying, I guess he tries to say he's so desperate that he needs to pay day for being in the, uh, in the main event. Then John Cena comes back out. He comes back out and he beats the hell out of Baron Corbin. And then, um, or we don't beat Baron Corbin. He, 
I he beat him up a little bit and then throw him into the ring post. And then he grabs the contract and he pulled, like, I guess the whole thing was like how they was messing with Paul Heyman, how Paul Heyman pulls the pen out his little pock, uh, his little suit pocket. And now and then Barry Corbin pulled a pen out his pants pocket. So John Cena did the same thing. He put he instead of pulling out a pen, he put like pull out like a big blue uh magic marker <laughs> and, and uh basically signed his name on the contract. Basically if it's official, make if it would be official making it uh John Cena versus Roman Reigns for SummerSlam for the Universal Championship. Um Though you, you, that's and then it goes to commercial break, but you think that would be the end of the promo? That's not even the end of the promo. Paul Heyman, the end of the promo is when it comes back from commercial break. Paul Heyman confronts Adam and Sonya about what they're going to do because she said he said technically it's supposed to be. He said that's Finn. He tried to say it's Finn Balor's name on the contract with Roman Reigns, so it's supposed to be Roman Reigns and Finn Balor. But not as you know, he's thinking it's going to be a triple threat match. He thinks it's going to be a match. Because John Cena signs now, you, they think they're gonna make it John Cena and Finn Balor versus Roman Reigns. But they said they tell they tell Paul that there's nothing they're gonna do about it. But he, they tell Paul, here's what we see: we see Roman Reigns' name on the contract, we see John Cena's name on the contract, and he said that's good enough for him. So they and you know, so I tell you, these this contract is rectified. This means that is it's official. Even you know it was John Cena wasn't supposed to yeah John Cena wasn't supposed to be there but it's good enough for them that he was there to sign it so therefore it will be Roman Reigns it's a, they made it official it will be Roman Reigns versus uh, John Cena at SummerSlam for the Universal Championship not Finn Balor though I thought it was going to be a triple threat match but apparently not okay finally after all that we get to I did just this match number three of the night which is Biggie. Uh, King Nakamura and Cesaro versus Dolph Ziggler, Robert Ru versus Dolph Ziggler, Apollo and Robert Roode, uh, six man tag match. And you know I, the one thing I did like it was an okay match, kind of like we it, we kind of been getting these the, the similar matches up with the mixture of Robert Roode and now I guess this is supposed to be this is what became of that little brawl they had the last week. That never amounted to nothing, and when they was here in Cleveland, so this is like the little, the this is what happened. They ended up having a match, so the match was okay itself. But I what made it the best part of it was once again hearing the crowd go crazy to Nakamura's song, you know, sing his song. And so it was like it was that was like the best part of it. But the match itself was good overall. But they ended up getting the uh, getting the win. When uh, King Nakamura hit the Ken Sasuke on uh, Apollo Crews, of all people, to get the win. Um, let's see. We got an Edge promo. We had an Edge promo. You know, Edge came out. He getting ready, like he getting ready to go in the ring to say something about, you know, what, what he, I guess, his plans for Seth Rollins was. But it goes to commercial break. And when it comes back for commercial break, Lord behold, Seth Rollins is in the... Uh, is in the ring. Why is Seth Rollins in the ring? What happened to Edge? We found out that I don't know why we couldn't see it and why it happened off uh, camera. But apparently, while it was on commercial, Seth Rollins attacked Edge on his way to the ring because the, the, it went on commercial while Edge was still on his way to the ring, and they revealed that during that time while we was on commercial break, he got attacked. And so bad that they had to take Edge back to the back. So it turned from an Edge promo that prop that you know it probably was gonna have him call out Seth Rollins to just to a whole Seth Rollins promo about how you know basically saying in, in so many words he's doing what he's doing because Edge he he said Edge keeps taking everything from him he keeps take take taking uh, and he's uh, and he's sick of it. So he said he basically said all this is to say that. If he he's the he think he's the rightful heir, he's the ne he's the person destined to take the universal championship from Roman Reigns, and that he said if he can't be universal champion, I think they played like a whole video package of how what he was saying how Edge kept getting in his way of having a championship match with Roman Reigns. So they said he was saying if he can't be champion, 
Universal Champion. Not, then neither will Edge. And he ends his promo with that. I think he laughed for angry throwing the mic down to the ground. So, this leads into the final match of the night, which is the main event, which is Bianca Belair versus Sasha Banks. I mean, versus Bianca Belair and Sasha Banks versus Carmella and Zelina Vega. Um, the match was good. The match was good in itself. Um, pretty decent match. A nice return match for Sasha Banks. It was that's you got the feeling that the match was basically built around Sasha Banks returning. So it was basically more so her getting they putting her over than anything, and she would actually get the victory. She would. Uh, I think she. Um, she would put, uh, I want to say Zelina in the um, bank statement. It was either Zelina or Carmella that she put in the bank statement and would get the submission victory. Cause yeah, she got the, uh, yeah, it was she submit. She I forgot who she submitted. I forgot to write that down. If it was either you know Carmella or Zelina Vega, but she ended up submitting one of the two, and. Uh, you know, they celebrated in the ring. You know, everything's a hunky dory, just like earlier in the night. Except, Sasha turns on Bianca. What a surprise. Like that, like off of the World Bar Chicken. What a twist. <laughs> it really wasn't a twist at all. Like, I saw that coming. Of course, she was about to turn on Bianca Belair. I just want to know why people haven't figured out that she's going to turn on you if she wants what you got. And you just beat her at WrestleMania. So that's what came into play. She's beating her up. Telling her that everything she's had. All the success she's had with the championship. Everything because of her. Because of her. He said, she said, I gave you the moment at, uh, at WrestleMania. I got you the SB. You know, everything you have, I got you. I did. I did. And basically she want, was hers. And she wants to uh, smack down with the championship. She beats her up some more. And uh, holds up the title. And then drop the title. We put her back into the bank statement, and she's back. She's still yelling. At, that's when she started yelling at her again about how she got her everything in the, end of the show. Overall, if I were to give the show anything, this episode of SmackDown was. I I would say it was a decent seven. Yeah, seven big ups. Just because. It really, it wasn't a, a once again. It wasn't a great show. You know, the John Cena promo was good. I really didn't care. For, I didn't care for the Rey Mysterio uh, match, even though I love Rey Mysterio. Rey Mysterio, Eddie Guerrero was my one of my favorite wrestlers, but I couldn't care less because we keep getting the same match and it doesn't amount to anything. Uh, the Bianca promo was cool with the return of uh, Sasha. Um, I didn't care for the I didn't care for the uh, Chad Gable. And that's one that's one of my other things was that now that I get down to the Chad Gable match, the Chad Gable Red, that's like it's only one more match left before the um, pro, before the uh, main event match, and the only two and the only two matches I cared about that that I actually enjoyed watching was the Bianca Belair and. And the six man tag match. Other than that, the other two matches they had that night was pretty much uh, was pretty much horrible. Um, the the all the promos. I think every promo was good except for the Edge promo. I think the Edge promo was okay. It just I, I we were wait, wish they would have let us see Edge get attacked, or at least get him in the ring and had him say something before he got attacked by Seth Rollins. I think that promo was executed just a little bit messed up, but overall, still enjoyed the promo for Seth Rollins. Um, the main event was cool, but yeah, it was just they had they. It's just a little hit and miss. That like they, I I wish they would let me be like a writer or or, or you know let that let me let us tell you how to because I could I could have cut that whole sort way better than that. And that's all who I had to work with. I would made that so way better, but. That's just my opinion. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys thought of SmackDown. And if you enjoyed this review, then hit this button right there in the upper right corner for all of my SmackDown Raw reviews. And if you really enjoyed and you want to support the channel, then hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and turn on that notification button. Or hit any one of these videos for more of my amazing content. I am out. But stay tuned. I got some days going for you. Peace.